Good afternoon and welcome to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Malandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. Joining me at the market site in Times Square, we have Peter Vyhansky is back with us. He's a senior vice president over data art. And we're going to take a look at the economics of the cloud. Peter, it's great to have you back with us. Always a pleasure. The business case for the cloud, it seems like you have to get on board or you're not on board. True. However, w what we have to realize is uh, the promise of cost savings is real, but you're not getting there overnight. So initially, as people start to move workloads off of their on-premise infrastructure into the cloud, you may actually see your overall spend go up instead of down. And the reasons for that are well understood. I mean, if you're running a fairly well-organized virtualized data centers, you can't really shut down a data center until all of the workloads have been migrated. So in the, in the beginning, you're paying for both, plus the cost of migration has to be factored in. So uh, it's just going to take a little bit of time. Yeah, so it seems like for businesses, managing the cost, the growing cost of cloud is a priority for them. Yes, indeed. I was looking at a report, a state of the cloud report 2019 that came out earlier this year, and 84% of respondents say that managing and optimizing cloud costs is a growing concern, and 64% of respondents say it's their number one priority. So uh, cloud can be very efficient if you're doing it right but there's many ways in which you can be doing it wrong. And so even the response in that same survey, self-reporting, I think they're, they're telling the, uh, the, um, the organization that ran the survey that close to a quarter of their cloud spend is waste. The organization itself estimates it to be closer to one third. Both are, you know, either, either one is enormous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is enormous. So how do you think about cloud economics? How is it different than traditional data management? Sure, exactly. Uh, I mean, the cloud infrastructure is, the, the number one difference is that it's not a, a capital expense. It's not CapEx, OpEx. So the pricing model is pretty much pay as you go. There, there is some prepayment uh, uh, available to you as an options, but overall, by and large, it's a pay as you go model. So it's a more utility situation for you. And then you have to understand the, the landscape of services and, and resources that are available to you on those big cloud platforms and understand how the pricing actually works. Understand what drives the prices, say, the sizes of your virtual machines, and it's, it's CPU rather than memory, and it's the data egress traffic versus ingress. All those intricacies have to be understood in order for you to take control of your cloud spend. Is it in the long run less expensive because you don't have that, that hardware cost? You're not paying for a data center if everything's virtually in the cloud? It's In the long run, it's it's less expensive because you don't have to over-provision. So if you, mm -hmm. uh, you, most situations, you don't have even demand, so you have fluctuating demand but you have to be provisioned for your peak and then some. So most of the time you're running at very low utilization. In the cloud, your actual provisioning can scale up or down, out or in, with your actual demand. So that's where you win. Right. You're not over provisioned. But, but then there are many ways that you can waste money in the cloud. And there are many best practices that are, are there for people to take advantage of to counter those. So what are the best practices for optimizing clouds then? So some of the ways that you're wasting money in the cloud is that the resources are so easy to provision that people simply forgot that they've provisioned them and keep paying for them. It's not so the cloud providers will tell you, oh, cloud is be brilliant and beautiful because you only pay for what you need. Well, in reality, it's more like you pay for what you forgot to turn off. So um, one, know what you have. Find out if you have any abandoned uh, or um, unattached resources and just shut them down. Second, build heat maps and dashboards to understand when your actual demand, uh, how it's spread over time. So for example, if you have development environments running and you see that they're idling over the weekend, well, you can safely shut them down over the weekend, right? And then, but that's two days out of seven that you're not paying for anymore. Because remember, once you provision that resource, whether you're using it or not, as long as it's running, you're paying for every second of it. So those kind of uh, practices are very, very important to understand. So you ch your, your operational processes can, need to be changed. Many of those things can be automated with modern tools, and there's a plethora of those tools that are able to uh, help you manage, uh, get visibility into clarity on it, and manage your cloud costs across, even across multiple providers. Then you need to understand that there are discount options that you may be, may, may be forgetting about and not, not taking advantage of. That same survey, uh, State of Cloud Report, says less than half of Azure customers and AWS customers are taking advantage of what's called reserved instances, for example. Those are very important. If you know that you have workloads running 24-7 or you know, much of the time, you can reserve the compute capacity, and that gives you 30, 30 40, 50, or more percent discount off the, demand, the on-demand prices. There's no need to pay for everything at the on-demand pricing tier. It's the most expensive tier. So uh, that's one big opportunity. People are, uh, en masse, not taking advantage of it. And then there's uh, what's called spot instances. They're called spot instances on AWS. They're called low priority VMs on uh, Microsoft and I think preemptible VMs on, on Google. The idea is very simple. So 
do you know what Hotel Tonight is? Uh, I do not. Okay, Hotel Tonight is a little app that sits in your phone, and it, it does exactly what it says on the tin. It gives you a hotel room tonight. Oh, yes, 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 right? okay, yep. Actually, a customer of Data Arts. So, uh, so un unsold, unsold inventory. Mm -hmm. So it's the same idea. Same premise. At every given moment in time, those big hyperscale cloud providers have massive amounts of unsold inventory, and they're willing to let you have it at a very steep discount, 80 to 90% off of the on-demand right. pricing, with a caveat that when they need it back, they'll take it away. But, and here's where architecture of your application comes into play as well, uh, you get a two-minute warning that your machine is gonna, your virtual machine is gonna go away. If you're architected in such a way that you're full tolerant and stateless and you can easily transfer the load uh, to other instances that you can stand up, then you can take advantage of that enormous discount. So all sorts of intricacies you need to be aware of to take full advantage. And that's why it's a, it's a learning curve. Mm -hmm. It's not an automatic switch, boom, and you're in, in um, uh, utopia where you're saving right. enormous amounts of money. You have to get there over time. So, so to wrap up here, when you think about, you should think about it from a cost perspective, look at it more from a value perspective. I couldn't agree with you more. It's not about, I mean, people come for the cost savings, but they stay for innovation and agility. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's not about doing the same thing that you were doing yesterday for cheaper. It's about doing the things that you could not do yesterday. And the main advantage of the cloud is obviously business agility, the ability to create new technology or change your technology frequently, safely, uh, and reliably. And that's what the cloud is made for, in my opinion. All right, thank you so much, Peter, for joining us as always. And thank you for joining me on Trade Talks. I'm Jill Melandrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ.